Hello YouTube. I got a new bassoon case. And I didn't see very many other people who had this case. In fact, I only know one other person who's got this. And not a whole lot of information about it online except for one video about a uh, raincoat that it comes with. So I thought I'd do a full review from an actual bassoonist perspective on this bassoon case. So this is the Marcus Bona MB2 bassoon case, so a different version than the, the, the Mar standard Marcus Bona case that's been pretty ubiquitous for the last maybe 15 years or so. And uh, it's got quite a few different features than the original case, and I thought it would be a nice change from uh, the BAM high-tech carbon fiber case that I'd been using. There were some things about that case that I didn't like, so I thought I would try something a little different. So uh, let's start with the exterior features of the case. Um, it's got two exterior pouches, which I'll go into detail about, um, but those are actually removable. The main component of the case, main compartment, uh, is different dimensions than what we're used to seeing of the bassoon case. Um, you can probably immediately tell it's a lot narrower than a typical bassoon case is. Um, that has to do with the way that the bassoon is set inside the case. Um, but it is deeper in order to accommodate that change. Um, the length from end to end is the same as any bassoon case is going to be. The length of your long joint determines that, so it can't, can't be any shorter than this. Uh, Velcroed handle and uh, a zipper closure like any other Marcus Bona case. The straps that it comes with, it's got one uh, single shoulder strap if you like to carry the case like a kind of a briefcase or with a shoulder strap. Uh, all of the straps connected with these sort of oversized paper clips and they uh, were really kind of a pain to get on which means they're not going to slip off by accident. Um, I had to actually wedge this open with a screwdriver in order to be able to get it on the, the D-rings that are here. Um, Marcus Bone has got a history of these being really stable. They're really integrated into the case so I'm sure that they're going to be fine for a long time. This is actually removable with Velcro so it goes over the folded section so it can go anywhere. And this is as short as it gets um, so it can go get really long if you like to sling it over the opposite shoulder than you're actually carrying on or whatever. On the bottom side of the case, this is where the backpacks are, backpack straps, um, nylons, uh, main strap and uh, like a neoprene with fabric kind of uh, cushy uh, underside and these clip the same way. The adjustment straps on this uh, are really stable. These are not going to come loose on you um, or tighten by accident, so they're really, really sturdy. Uh, Bona comes out with a new design of straps every few years. I'm assuming this is what comes on all of the other bassoon cases now. Uh, one feature that I was really pleasantly surprised about with this compared to any other case that I have, it actually stands up. Uh, the Wiseman tubular cases are the only other cases I know that actually stand up like this. So it's, you know, great that it actually does that. Uh, it doesn't tip over like my BAM or like the other Marcus Bona cases have. And it's uh, metal buttons on the bottom, so nice and stable on the bottom. It did come with a different luggage tag than this, but it was basically the same kind of thing. I just like this tag a little better. Top handle. Okay. Let's check out the actual storage features of the case. Let's start on the top and work our way in. This pocket on the very outside is vocal storage. A lot of people complained about the other Marcus Bona case not having external vocal storage, um, which has become popular in recent years. So Bona stepped up, included a, a pocket on the outside. Two zippers open up to reveal a dedicated vocal wallet. So a little bit interesting that they decided to just to actually make the vocal wallet removable and not just integrated into the whole thing, but so it's an extra set of zippers that you have to deal with. Um, this is just the fabric. This is not protective in any way except for you know what the fabric offers. This case is uh, what the actual vocals are kept in. This is a very dense and rigid foam that's a little bit thicker than the thickness of your vocals. And you can tell that it fits different types and shapes of bassoon vocal. So this is a standard S bend, uh, that's a Mooseman vocal, and this is a straight bend Leitzinger vocal, and they both fit comfortably in here. Um, it doesn't look like the vocals could come in contact with each other, no matter how much I kind of maneuver where they are, they're not going to bump into each other. 
However, the tip of my straight bend buckle will come in contact with the zipper, which is probably not that big of a deal, but some people are going to get fussy about that. Um, let's see. It looks like, ah, I didn't even realize, didn't even notice this until just now that this lid looks like will come off completely uh, if you undo the zipper all the way. Not really sure why you would want to do that. Um, I would think that you would just want to use it as a wallet. Um, however, I'm not going to use this vocal storage case. Uh, I am going to use the outside pocket for vocal storage, but I'm not going to use the wallet that it came with because this is not particularly protective at all. Um, there's something in here that feels kind of like maybe really dense cardboard, possibly plastic, but thin if it is plastic. I, I'm not going to do a ballistics test on it, but if I'm going to put my vocals on the very outside pocket, I want there to be a lot of ballistic protection. I don't want anything to be able to poke or go through the through anything, e even to come close to, you know, it dents the vocals or anything. So I'm not going to use this case for, for vocal storage. I'm going to use this just to keep extra vocals at home. And instead, the vocal wallet that I've been using for extra storage for vocals at home, which is this one by Kobol, which I've had for a number of years. Um, it's meant for four vocals, has this extra piece of foam in the middle. Don't need that because I'm not going to keep four vocals with me. Um, I'm just going to slip this vocal by itself in here, close it up. And the reason I'm going to use this is because that has a really thick, probably plexiglass or fiberglass or something exterior um, uh, protection. And that fits, I was glad to find that that fits perfectly fine in the outer pocket. It would fit with the, uh, with the extra foam, makes it a little bit thicker. So if you do actually want to carry actually up to six vocals in this vocal case, because you can fit two more on the inside if you want, um, you could do that. I don't know anybody who needs that many vocals. The second case, now this, this vocal wallet is stitched permanently to this next wallet. Um, so this is the sheet music container, and uh, it's great. This is the best sheet music pouch uh, that I think you can get. The, the one that attaches to the Wiseman tubular cases is maybe about this big, um, but that one curls around the case a little bit too, and you have to strap it on with a belt or something. Um, but this one is big enough. This is, I think, A4 size paper, standard like orchestral piece. Um, this is your, you know, typical, you know, study etude, study book. You can see plenty of extra room in there for that. In fact, this is so big. This is the, one of the largest oversized pieces of music that I have in my library. This is a, a first printing of the Libby Larson concert piece. Uh, the only other piece that I've got that's this big is the uh, my copy of Darty's Dead Elvis, which. Um, is the same size, and that closes in just fine. So I, I think if you run across any piece of sheet music that doesn't fit in this pocket, um, you're not going to find anything that it fits in anyway. So you're probably, you know, out of luck regardless. It is not big enough to fit a, one of those black orchestral folders. So you're still out of luck there, but if all you're doing is putting sheet music or regular folders in there, just fine. So. If you don't need the external vocal storage case and you like to carry your sheet music in something else and don't need the sheet music carrier, this external double pocket just zips right off of that. And I don't know, let me toss it aside to show you the rest of the case. So if I don't need that vocal, um, then I can just take this to the gig. Uh, especially if I'm playing in my rock band, or if I'm playing in one of my improvised stuff, or, and I'm doing electric bassoon, uh, this is all I'm going to need to take, because I've got another vocal inside the case. So, let's open it up. Nice and sturdy zippers, and this is the interior of the case. So, this is what intrigued me about this case, is I, I was hoping that I'd be able to keep my hand crutch and my balance hanger on the, in, on the instrument. That doesn't work out, but I still like what this offers. So this flap is uh, Velcroed here and offers protection, I think, between the bell and the rest of the instrument. So that's where we're going to start. How the instrument is kept in 
So there's a Velcro strap and the bell comes out and I can take it out with one hand, which is nice. Um, so there's just the, the, the rubber blocking and your bell fits right in here. And again, I can put it away with one hand, which is good. Uh, the rest of the instrument, so I've got, X, it's winter in Minnesota, so I've got lots of humidification stuff kind of set in some of the dead space in here, uh, and it fits just fine. Uh, the boot joint fits with my balance hanger still in, in uh, attached uh, into this pocket, and it fits really comfortably, and the way that the foam is structured is that it doesn't appear that any of the keywork is being touched at any point. So the other blocking for the boot is up here goes on the wood on this section right here and uh, on the boot again, uh, the, the, the cap on the bottom. So no pressure on any of the key work here. And I've got my whisper lock here and my uh, right hand E flat trill. So I've got extra key work here that on some cases that gets in the way, uh, but not for this one. So that's really nice. So I'll just set this aside so that we can keep looking at the rest of the inside. I always like to wrap my wing joint up in a cloth, regardless of the case that it's in, as long as it's going to nest with the base joint, which is what it's doing here. Um, so these are held in uh, holes in the foam down here, and the whisper key adjustment rod sits there, and this blocking keeps the wing from moving in this direction. Uh, the long joint is just you know held in place by the end of the case. So this fits my instrument, which is a Mooseman 222, pretty comfortably. I guess I kind of need to take the joints out separately because the base is a little bit snug, uh, but not too, not too much. Um, I suspect that eventually these two holes are going to get kind of gummy with uh, cork grease residue, or if you have string joints, maybe with wax or something. So probably just goes with the territory for any case, really. You're going to get that build up. So let's leave the wing joint out so you can see the rest of the interior. Um, I just made space for my humostat over here. Uh, it's kind of nice. This, this extra compartment or space right here you can fit. Uh, maybe your seat strap will fit there or, I don't know, your reed soaker or something. I've got, again, extra humidification, humidification because of the time of year. All right, accessory storage. We've got two cases. We've got this pouch on the top, which closes with magnets, which I like. I like that they're not s snaps. They're just magnets, so they just kind of pop back in place and hold this closed. It's got a little cord that keeps it from opening too far, and this is just the perfect size for your reed cases. So I think even one of those reeds and stuff plastic with the humidifier thing in it, those will fit in this. There's plenty of extra room. I've got a pencil and my earplugs and this extra three reed, reed case all fit nicely in this upper pocket. It isn't very deep. It's only as deep as the, the lid of the case. So just the right size for reed cases. I'm pretty sure that's what it's intended for. Um, there's my swab. This accessory pocket here is completely segregated from the rest of the case when the case is closed. So you can put even things that kind of float loosely in there. So there's my hand crutch. Um, I've got my seat strap in there and um, a Ziploc bag that's got some cigarette paper. And then this is like my, my accessory bag. This doesn't come with the case. This is just you know, what I've been using for years to keep my reed making equipment in, you know, my, my spare reed making equipment, toothbrush, toothpaste cork grease. That's all just, I've always kept that in this pouch. So I didn't have a place to put that in my, um, in my BAM case. Uh, that had to go in one of the outside pockets uh, because the only inside storage in that case was just big enough for like my water cup and uh, like my seat strap. And that was pretty much it. So this I can throw, I don't have my water cup in here right now because I'm in my studio at home, but anyway, that's where I can fit my neck strap up in there, and it closes just fine with all of that. So, the one complaint that everybody has about the Bona cases is the vocal storage on the inside of the case is not great. And in order to keep the case slim, they keep the wing joint pretty close to the bottom of the case, and that's where the real problem is. So, while this case comes with two of these pouches, I've just got the other one off camera, I'm only really able to use one with my instrument because if I put one of these anywhere else in this case, 
this section of my wing joint sits and presses right against it. So they didn't leave enough vertical space to really be able to put another one of these vocal cases anywhere else inside. It does not it does not fit here without still getting underneath the wing joint. So it looks like there's enough space, and there is for just a vocal, but not for this pouch. So it's unfortunate, um, but I found this place right here still allows me to put all of the instrument in without any pressure on the keys of the instrument or where the vocal actually is. So I'm keeping my, my electric bassoon vocal in here because it's got that little extra tab anyway. And then this is just, that's my plug for the electric vocal. This, this is, it doesn't come with a case. This is just my own thing. So and I'm just keeping it. That seemed to be a place to kind of hold it. So this is still fine. And most people only use one vocal anyway. So even if you just wanted to take you know, the slimmest amount of, of case with you without the extra pockets. Uh, you can fit your main vocal that you're going to use for like 99% of your playing in here and not have to worry about any additional vocal storage. Uh, if you've been using the regular Marcus Bona case and storing two vocals in it, you'll probably find a place for the two pouches inside this case will be about the same. No improvement there as far as I can tell. And I used a regular Marcus Bona case for years before I got my BAM, so I, I know what that case is like. Um, so I'm going to put the, put the instrument back in here. And we'll put my all my extra humidification and put that up there. Put my swab up at the top and then close the case up. So, I really like this case. Um, I wasn't, you know, I thought about it a long time before I decided to pull the trigger on it, but I'm glad I did. It's quite a bit lighter, especially without the extra cases on the outside. So when I'm going to a gig and I'm already carrying my electric effects and my amplifier and things, I, I want to carry less if I can. And so it's nice to just be able to carry this much and not have to worry about, um, you know, extra pockets if I don't need them. But if I ever need my other vocal, I probably also need sheet music. So in that case, I can just zip this back on and I'll zip the one side on at least. So you can see how it's pretty, if I do this smoothly enough, that's one side back on. And where's the zipper? I'm getting better at this. It took me a couple of times to get really smooth at doing that. So now this is zipped back in, back in place, ready to go to the orchestra job if I have one. Um, so, really slick case is the MB2 by Marcus Bona. Um, good quality. Check it out at your favorite bassoon specialty shop.